Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below to see all of those discounted games. Hello my friends, I cannot believe it's already time for the Essen Spiel Fair in Germany. My gosh, this year is flying by. So today I'm going to be doing my top 10 most anticipated games. Now after this, I'm going to be doing the, my top 10 games that I've already played. So if there's games in here that you're like, how did that not make your list? Well, you're going to want to subscribe and not miss this. That video is going to be coming out in a few days from now because I do get the pleasure of playing some things early. So again, if there's some popular things that aren't on here, maybe they're going to be on that other list. Here we go. Number 10. Now, before I start with number 10, I also want to preface that all of these were on the Board Game Geek preview list. Thank you, Eric Martin and team, for doing this. We couldn't do this job without you. Uh, and also, all of these were listed with the filter of for sale. So these are supposed to be for sale only, not just demo at the fair. First one, number 10, is up or down. I tend to try to cross-section different types of games on these lists, and usually the ones towards the top are a little bit lighter, filler games, card games, party games, things like that. This is up or down. It's a small little card game, but it's from the tag team duo of Kramer and Kiesling, uh, one of my favorite design teams. Now in this, it's a light little card game where you're building ascending and descending rows of cards, trying to place as many cards of the same color in a row as possible. Now you're gonna place a card from your hand between surrounding numbers in the ring in the middle. For example, 37 would go between 34 and 52. Then you take one of those cards that surround your just place card and add it to your hand or your display. Now you're either gonna start a new uh, little column or adding it to an existing one. And in your turn, you're either gonna draw a face up card that's in the middle or a face down card. So this is interesting because it's like, it reminds me of a game called Ohanami, which was one where you, you have three columns of cards, you're trying to put them in order. Those things would score differently depending on the type of card it was, the color card it was in the round. This, this has that similarity of you building three columns, you're trying to put them in order, but the way you get these cards is very different. I like that where you're, it seems like you're, you know, you're placing a card, taking a card that surrounds it closest to number, right? And then you're going to place that. And so I just think that twist is going to be interesting. Uh, and Kramer and Kiesling just always do great stuff for us. So a good little small little uh, filler there, up or down. Number nine. This next one is sort of a lighter family game. Uh, it's called Agent Avenue. The reason why I'm just interested in this, is it is co-designed by one of the co-designers of Mindbug. Uh, and that is an amazing two-player card game. And the fact that he's involved with that makes me want to see this because I want to see what else he's, he can design here. This is a competitive game for mostly two players, but it plays two to four players in a team variant uh, that it combines a little bit of bluffing, some strategic set collection, and a race to uncover your opponent's identity. So it's set in, in a colorful anthropomorphic uh, world. Players assume the roles of retired spies in a suburban neighborhood. And you're gonna be trying to outsmart each other with cards that can score points or trigger, trigger special effects. Now it uses an I split you to choose mechanism, uh, which is basically you're gonna play one card face up and one card face down. Your opponent chooses one of those cards and then you get the other. So you're basically saying, hey, you want this? I'm gonna hide this. Or you might want this, I want the thing that's there. So you're gonna get one of those things. So some strategy there. You got some set collection. Now when you get these cards, they're gonna move you a certain amount on the board depending on, and, and some of these cards actually might help you win or lose the game immediately, uh, depending on the, how many cards of that type you have. Some of the cards are like, hey, you don't really move anything to the third card. Someone's like, hey, it moves your first a lot, but then not a lot the second two times. And again, some of them, if it's like your third card of that type, you might win or lose. Uh, it's basically a race to catch the other spy. It's mainly two player, but there is a three or four player team game. It seems like just a nice little light little strategy game uh, that's family level, but still has some good, good decisions there. And that is Agent Avenue. Number eight. Number eight is Golden Cup. Now this is co-designed by Simone Luciani, who's done many huge, heavy games. He's done a few lighter ones too. This one is a lighter game. This is an auto battler, similar to say Challengers that won the Kenner Spiel last year. Uh, but you're using an, an economy to upgrade your scouting, which is helping you get better players, and your stadium, getting you more money to spend each round. Now you're gonna be buying better players as the game goes on from bronze to, bronze to silver to gold, uh, or you're gonna be getting things to help you, tokens to help you attack or defend. So basically you're gonna buy these players, you're gonna be slotting them in specific spots on your board, 
And you're going to be strategically doing that depending on the team that you're playing with. Do they have a lot of defense? Do they have a lot of offense? Because essentially you're going to be drawing from a bag. It's a sort of a bag builder as you get more tokens. And you're going to be basically trying to beat them on attack. And if so, the amount that you beat them by, if it's one, two, or three, or four, that's the slot that your person gets to, to shoot with and they're trying to score a goal against. Uh, but the, the higher the number, the more chances they have to do it. So there's some strategy as to which people you pick and where you place them. And some of them give you benefits, some of them get you better attack defense tokens, some of them get you sing single times abilities, sometimes all sorts of different things. But the fact that they're playing off of challengers is interesting, and the fact that it's Simone Luciani is interesting. So that is Golden Cup from Cranial Creations. Number seven. Uh, the next one is Unconscious Mind. Now, one of the co-designers of this game is Johnny Pack. Uh, I got a chance to meet him at uh, Dice Tower West earlier this year, uh, and he just does amazing things both in development and design. So I'm interested in this because of him, but also it's got art from Vincent Dutre and Andrew Bosley. Whoa, that's a dynamic duo. This is a Euro-style game featuring worker placement, engine building, multiple rondelles, and a cascading effects. Now it's a heavier game, it's like 4.07 weight on Board Game Geek, it lasts one to two hours. It's set in the early 1900s, where the Austrian neurologist Sigmund Freud established a revolutionary theory called psychoanalysis. Now related to the study of the unconscious mind, uh, his work took hold and supporters met uh, 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 Freud's apartment every Wednesday to discuss psychology and dream symbolism. Now this group is the Wednesday Psychological Society marked the beginning of the worldwide psychoanalytic uh, movement. Now as a member of this society, that's you in this game, you aim to formulate new therapeutic techniques, establish a practice, grow your, uh, your clientele, and become uh, Freud's most distinguished contemporary. Uh, and to best accomplish this, you'll need to share insights, discuss ideas with peers, and publish theories, and to stay invigorated. And you'll likely need some coffee, lots of coffee. So this seems like it's going to be one of those really thematic Euros, which when I play Euro games, I like those really thematic ones. Uh, and this looks like it's going to be things like that. Um, and so, again, great artists and uh, a designer I like. So there you have it. It is Unconscious Mind. Number six. The next one is actually sort of a new version of the game. It is called Blitz Bowl Ultimate Second Edition. Now, Blitz Bowl came out a while back, uh, and Blitz Bowl uh, is basically a smaller, more streamlined version of Blood Bowl. Now, these games are basically like kind of a sports game, like football or rugby, if you will, that where you're getting the ball, you're trying to score it, and you have like fantasy factions, like like dwarfs and orcs and things like that. And each of them have different stats. Each team is asymmetrical. They have different abilities. They have different strengths and weaknesses. And you're using those strengths and weaknesses with a sort of an abstract nature to move around, to knock people over, to do different abilities, to try to throw the ball, to try to score. Uh, now this is a more a smaller, more approachable version, this new second edition. Uh, it's, it's, it's supposed to be streamlined and have balanced gameplay. I've read some of the differences between them. It seems like it's going to be great. Uh, it is basically a football abstract game with dice chucking and special abilities. And I've always kind of wanted to play this game because I like sports a lot. Um, and I like abstract games, so I thought this would be kind of cool. And the fact that they're kind of streamlining this makes me more interested in this than ever. And that is Blitz Bowl 2nd Edition, the ultimate 2nd Edition. Number 5. The next one is Lost in Adventure from DV. So you and your fellow players are going to cooperatively together explore an unknown world where your every action impacts how the story unfolds. Now you'll discover the game's scenery as you go, placing cards side by side, talking to characters you'll meet, collecting clues, and using objects wisely. Now your decisions will affect the adventure and lead you to one of the possible endings, and your goal is to fulfill all the prophecies and complete the adventure with as many favors as possible. Now this is supposed to be like some of those old school point and click PC game adventures from like LucasArts or Sierra. I think of like, you know, back in the day uh, where you had like Maniac Mansion and Day of the Tentacle. I loved those games as a kid. Uh, uh, Curse of Monkey Island. Um, I loved those games. And the beauty of this reminds me of a game, an adventure game on PC called Myst back in the day. Now there has been some implementation board game wise of games like this, like Cantaloupe Breaking Into Prison was one of those. It was a solo only adventure, which I did enjoy. Uh, and this one looks like it plays more players. And again, I like those old PC point and click adventures and I kind of like seeing these ideas coming back and coming to the, the board game world with art that looks beautiful. Uh, and so, yes, yeah, so this is coming from DV and uh, this one looks interesting to me and it's Lost in Adventure. Number four. Four, 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 four. 
This next one is Craft Wagon Age of Engineering. Now, uh, there's a few different publishers publishing this. In North America, Arcane Wonders is going to be bringing us this. Now, this is a standalone game. It's not an expansion of Craft, Craft Wagon. This is a standalone game that re-implements the original design by Mateus Kramer. Uh, now, it has imp improvements, simplifications that lessen the luck factor. Now, Craft Wagon originally came out in 2015. I've still never played it. I heard it's great. I like the theme. I like the Euro mechanisms that are in it. Uh, in this, you're going to push the development of new engines and bodies uh, with which to launch the best possible range of vehicles on the market. And you'll have the opportunity to demonstrate your power uh, of your engines, the first Grand Prix that were held in American territory. And again, another thematic Euro. Um, you're basically going to be the, the, you know, a startup company in the American automotive industry during the early 20th century. So you're going to research and develop and innovate technologies to improve the, the production of bigger and better car bodies and the construction of more powerful and efficient engines to bring the best, most eye-catching vehicles to the market. You're also going to be selling cars that you manufacture that can earn you sums of money if you meet the needs of potential buyers. Now, your company's presence at the early Grand Prix events uh, will earn you fame, but you'll need to invest in time and resources to improve your brand's race car. I just think this sounds interesting. Again, it's a medium weight Euro. It's 75 to 90 minutes. Uh, the theme gets me. The look of this looks beautiful. The Euro mechanisms look cool. Uh, so that's Craft Wagon Age of Engineering. Number three. This next one is Firefighters on Duty. This is a real-time cooperative board game for one to four players. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play. And in this, you're gonna be immersing yourselves in an in intense two-minute rounds in which you're gonna manage an entire fire department. You're gonna be dispatching vehicles and firefighters across the city, extinguishing fires, saving civilians, and safeguarding properties. Now, every round, you're gonna be rolling your action dice as quickly as you can and performing actions based on the symbols that you roll. Now, every choice carries weight as the clock's always ticking and you're gonna to need to work together and make decisions under pressure and risk it all to keep the city safe. Now, this has the same designers as Project Elite which also in, is basically this type of game. Two minute rounds, rolling the dice, cooperative. I've played Project Elite. Actually, it's one of the first games I ever played with Tom Basil many, 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 many years ago. Uh, back maybe in, even, I don't know, 2014, 2015-ish, I think. Uh, back at BGG Con, and that was, he loved the game back then. And I actually enjoyed it. I didn't really like the theme of it much, but I did like what I was doing. And they put that to here to a theme that I actually like, some more real world stuff. And um, I imagine they probably changed some things in the way things work, but those little like tense two minute rounds, then you're talking about planning, and then you're going, and then you're talking about planning, and then you're going. I liked that in Project Elite, and bringing it to a cool theme like this, I am I'm pretty interested in this. And I think, you know, being firefighters, it kind of reminds me of like Flashpoint Fire Rescue, but this is called Firefighters on Duty. Uh, and this is from Artipia Games. Number two. All right, number two is Canopy Evergreen. Now this is a standalone game featuring card drafting and set collection, similar to the original game Canopy. So Canopy was like a small game. It played two to four players, but it was really designed as a two player game. Uh, and this re-implements that. I loved Canopy. It had Vintage Dutre art. I actually just like bought it on a whim in a store. I saw it. I was like, oh, this looks beautiful. I looked at it. I looked at sort of the rules. I'm like, this looks really cool. How did I miss this? And I got it. And man, I love that game. Canopy is so, so good. Great action selection. The way you're getting cards and padding different card uh, piles and knowing what might be in there for your opponents. And it's just a great game. Now with this one, it's basically a bigger version of it that has some different things. It has new rules for collecting food, growing trees on your forest board. Now where you grow them and how you grow them will do different things instead of just you know placing some cards in front of you that makes a tree grow. Uh, you're going to be gaining uh, permanent bonuses and, and, uh, and an interactive wildlife. Now you're going to get lost in Evergreen's forest with new plants, new animals, and environmentally friendly 3D tokens that grow while you play the game. So like in this, you're basically gonna be trying to grow your tallest trees. You're gonna be trying to collect sets of wild uh, plants and create bountiful habitats to basically uh, make the animals feel like they're at home and make them thrive. You're gonna be taking turns uh, with new cards into the forest that form uh, you know, tree growth piles. And each time you look at a pile, you're basically gonna select it and add more cards to your rainforest or you're gonna return it face down. So like you're gonna look at a pile, you're gonna go, oh, that's in there, do I want it? 
Or no, if I don't want it, I have to basically put a face down and add a card to it. So it's gonna get juicier and juicier, but I know what's in there. It's kind of press your luck a little bit because do I want the next pile? Oh, the next pile's not that great. I want the third pile. Oh, that one's not that great either, right? So uh, it's it, the, the, the selection of the cards in this was amazing, the original. They use it here again, but they actually sort of support it with other things to go on. Now, as the piles grow, you're basically gonna search for plants and animals that will benefit your forest the most, but you're gonna get choose carefully uh, as, you know, basically the, the, the animals, the flora, the fauna are all dangers in the form of disease and drought. There's all sorts of different things. So some things are good, some things are bad. You're trying to stay away from the bad things, get good things, do set collection, put animals together, activate abilities. After three seasons, the one who's grown the most beautiful rainforest wins. Yeah, I'm super interested in this because again, I love the original. And if they took something that was kind of tiny and they basically, they re-implemented it. It's a new game. It's basically, it was designed from the ground up for two to four players, where the original was kind of like two players, but there was a team variant. I still thought it was best with two. Um, so this is gonna be interesting. It's similar, but different uh, to a game I already love, Canopy Evergreen. Number one. All right, number one. By the way, if you didn't watch the intro, I'm gonna have another video. If you've missed some of this, or if you, basically if you're like, hey, why wasn't XXX on this list? You know, enter your game, enter your favorite game here. Um, I've had a chance to play some of the, the games that are released in Essen that are very popular, and that's gonna go on another video that's gonna come out in a few days. Uh, it's basically gonna be the best games at Essen that I've already played. So you're not gonna wanna miss that because some of the games that you think I may have missed here, I may have already played them and they might already be on that list. So you're gonna wanna subscribe and make sure you don't miss that video. Number one is Power Grid Outpost. Now Power Grid is one of my favorite games. Don't turn this off, this isn't an expansion. This is a new standalone game inspired by a game called Outpost that came out in 1991, which I had not played. But Freeman Freeze did back then and he loved it. So Power Grid Outpost, basically the colonization of a new planet advances quickly. There's a huge demand for electricity that uh, your company gladly will try to fulfill. There's randomized connection costs. There's auctioning power plants. So I've already done a video on this. I basically was so excited about this. I went and downloaded the rules, learned all the differences between normal Power Grid and this version of Power Grid. And I've already kind of gone through all of the details of what's different and it does look cool because you're gonna have those randomized connection costs. So every game, the map's gonna be different on how you connect. But auctioning power plants, you're not just getting power plants now, you're getting structures and technologies. Technologies are like one-time use abilities or sometimes more use abilities. The structures are interesting because they help you hold workers that help you power, run the power plants. That's basically the only resource in the game. You don't have multiple resources. And if you're short on those, you have to basically hire seasonal workers and that you can't like buy double amount of them like you can a regular power grid. But the later you go in the round, the more expensive they're gonna be as more people need them. So you're balancing the actual power plants. Basically the places, the structures that those people running those power plants can live and special abilities. So it's gonna be very similar. The structure and everything is the same as power grid. But there's, got, there's a lot of difference here. So this feels like out of all the spinoffs that came out, like for Sparks and Factory Manager, I love Factory Manager. Um, this one seems like it's the most like Power Grid than those two, but it also seems like it's going to give you a very, a, still a different experience, which I'm really excited about. So that's my number one Power Grid Outpost. Well, I hope this helped you learn about some games you hadn't even heard of, or maybe learn a little bit more about ones that you have. Again, there's another video coming out soon. Subscribe to not miss that. The top 10 games at Essen that I've already played that is just releasing there. Uh, this has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships with board games, and helping you find the next one you love. Game Toppers upgrades every game you play, and their 4.5 Kickstarter introduced the new Galactic Mycroft and Watson Game Toppers with interchangeable rail inlays, as well as new game mats, miniature gaming terrain packs, leg kit options, dining covers, accessories, and amazing package deals. The campaign recently ended, but it's not too late to pledge late at GameToppersLLC.com.